Good morning. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us this morning. It's a special day. Every day is special. It's the day the Lord has made. Okay, the children are off down to their Sunday school program. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of you. Let's just look to the Lord now and ask him to bless our time together. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness and grace. When we do consider your heavens and all that you have made, to think that you are mind, not only mindful of us, but that you care for us and that you demonstrated your love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And so as we meet here this morning, we pray and ask, God, that you might meet us where we're at. For you know our thoughts, you know our concerns and worries, and you know what we need most of all. We need your spirit to minister to our souls. So we ask that your spirit might have liberty to work in our midst here this morning. Cause us to look to Jesus. Cause us to see your Son, Father, perhaps in a manner and way that we haven't before that would only draw us closer to yourself. We thank you for each one of you. We thank you for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So it's good to have you with us this morning. Yes. Just to say that Cassandra's baby is awake now. Yay! Cassandra's baby is awake. Yes, and there's a card going around to be signed, to be sent off to Cassandra and Brad, sending in their uh, infant child who uh, underwent a heart surgery this past week, and apparently all went well, so praise the Lord, and uh, we need to continue to pray for healing upon this young child's uh, body, and as well, let's pray for the family, certainly uh, Diane is with them and at this time, and uh, uh, helping out in any way she can, so mm -hmm. certainly an item of uh, continued prayer, and at the same time, we praise the Lord for how he's worked things out so far. Mm -hmm. All right, another item of praise is uh, <coughs> our men's breakfast. That went really well yesterday, and we had a great time on fellowship. Thank Marcel for preparing uh, the meal and uh, the breakfast, and we had a great time of fellowship. Mm -hmm. And as well, the ladies had a great time meeting here in the afternoon. And uh, just uh, celebrating, of course, Mike and Ren, they their, their newborn, Connor, and, um, and they got together and had a great time of fellowship as well. So it's nice to see how this facility is being used, the house of the Lord, and we can, uh, we can celebrate and have fellowship and worship the Lord, and that's great to see. Surely. Thanks to Carol and whoever else helped her, Marie, and yeah. Games, we had fun, we had fellowship. It was beautiful to see a two week old baby, and it was lovely. We all enjoyed it so much. Thank you from the church. Certainly. I am afraid enjoyment. Certainly is. All right, so as well, we want to welcome Kent with us this morning. We'll be ministering the word, so we. Uh, we wait with anticipation as the Lord has laid on him uh, a message, and uh, certainly the Lord has uh, prepared our hearts to receive it. Welcome, Debbie, 
as well. Glad to have you with us and that you made it up uh, yesterday. You traveled up so you didn't have to worry about the snowman coming up before uh, all of that uh, transpired. And as well, we want to welcome uh, your daughter, Kelsey, and Andrew. Uh, so welcome, glad to have you with us this morning. And the regular gang, you are you know that you're welcome here. And, um, yeah, not so sure, right? <laughs> All right, items of uh, prayer and praise. Anything else? Celeste. Uh, Finn's family has asked us again to, to pray. Uh, that's my boss's right. nephew who has bone cancer. Uh, he, he's uh, taken sort of a tough turn lately. Mm. Uh, he's still at home, but they're, they're, they're asking for prayer. And I hate that they're going through this, but it's, it's nice when they seek prayer from a family that never sought prayer before. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I want to be faithful to them and pray for them every day and what they're going through and to just keep praying for us and our real estate problems because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not good. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just help there be peace in it all. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we can look to the Lord in these situations and circumstances. Yeah. Mike? Yeah, you know, I'll just reiterate what Shirley said. It was uh, great to see everybody show up together, and Ren was uh, in the dark until the very end, when she, when she saw her cousin coming up the steps, I blew, I blew a horn, and then I, I, I uncovered the whole thing <laughs> in the driveway, so, <laughs> anyway, it was great, I really appreciate everything, yeah. good time. And the muffins are great, Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great, you got some snacks. That's great. Excellent. And the supper too, the chicken from Korea. Yeah, and the sure potatoes. Did. They're all wondering what she put in the spice. <laughs> the potatoes, very good. Potatoes. Excellent. Okay. Any other items of praise, perhaps prayer, this morning? Suzanne, welcome. <laughs> Let's look to the Lord. Again, Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege it is that we have to come before your throne of grace through our Savior, Jesus. For your word reminds us that you are a very present help in times of trouble. Help us to be still and know that you are God. And yet at the same time, we can cast our cares upon you, for you care for us. So we continue to pray for this young life, Simeon. Pray for healing upon his body. Continued healing. We thank you, Lord, for this uh, process that he's been through and that you've answered prayer in such a way, Lord. You've heard our prayers and, and uh, you've granted the doctors the wisdom, but we recognize that you are the great physician. And so we pray for the family as well, Brad and Cassandra. Pray that you... Your peace would just uh, be their strength, even in this difficult time. And uh, help them uh, to trust in you through it and experience an extra measure of your grace. So we pray for this young boy as well, Finn, who seems to have taken a turn for the worse. We pray for healing upon his body and that through this, perhaps his parents would look to you and trust in you. We thank you that you speak to us in our trials and work through circumstances of life that you might draw us to yourself. And as well, we, we uh, thank you for the family of God. We thank you for, Lord, the way that you can use us to minister to one another, to encourage one another, to bless one another, to provide for one another. We thank you for all that you have. Uh, given to us and provided for us. And so we pray for Eric and Celeste, even concerning their, uh, uh, the selling of their home, that in your will, Lord, that they might be able to sell their home. And so uh, just lead there and guide them. And as well, Lord, we, we thank you for each blessing that you shower upon us from day to day. We thank you for um, Kent and Debbie being with us. We pray your blessings upon them as they're visiting with family and as well as Kent uh, speaks your word just uh, minister to him and through him at this time 
And Lord, do prepare our hearts. We thank you for uh, our time together, and we ask your continued blessing and guidance upon it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh. So at this time, we'll invite Kent up to the front. And, uh, God bless you, Kent. going to be a journey. 
4,000 year journey. Chapter 15, a lot has happened. Uh, Lot, his nephew who came with him, had uh, taken off to live in uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, which Sodom and Gomorrah in the, in the time of that happened uh, was the most fruitful place on the planet in that area. Everything was desert, wasteland, but Sodom at the base of the, where the, where the River Jordan came in, that, that whole area was a fertile, flat field. It was the richest place you could possibly imagine for growing stuff. It's kind of like going to the prairies for the first time. <clears throat> and, uh, and so, but so uh, Lot had said to his uncle, look, I'm going down there. That's where stuff is happening. And he went, and you know the story that uh, the place was so corrupt that eventually God judged it, and, uh, and uh, Lot escaped with his life. But after that happened, <clears throat> uh, Chapter 15, it says, uh, after these things, after God, after Abraham had rescued his nephew, and uh, uh, and uh, he says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Abraham in a vision. And he says, do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. But Abraham uh, said, Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me? You know, he's waiting for this heir to his to his promise that he, that he was looking forward to. Abraham said, Lord, what will you give me seeing that I go childless and the heir of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus? And Abraham said, look, what you have given me, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my, should be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be your heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And then he brought him outside and he said, Now look towards the heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to them, So shall your descendants be. And he believed in the Lord and it was count and he was counted to him for, here's the word I was thinking last week, righteousness. First time it's mentioned. What is righteousness? I'd like to turn to the second reading, just in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And um, here Jesus, after 4,000 years, has come. Uh, he spent uh, most of that time trying to call the nation of Israel that, uh, back to God, but uh, they weren't in a really any uh, frame of mind. They had a nice religion. Uh, Judy... Judaism, which was <clears throat> at that time, by the time Jesus came, totally uh, missing the point. Uh, so much so that when Jesus came and said, here I am, they said, no, we don't want you. And so they crucified him, and on the third day he rose again. After that happened, <clears throat> the disciples, those who came to know Christ, uh, they went out preaching the word everywhere. And this is... Um, from Romans uh, chapter 1, and I'm just going to uh, read um, a little bit about them uh, as way by way of introduction. Now these, uh, this is Paul writing to the people who are believers uh, in Jesus and those who are thinking about it. Um, so let's, I'm just going to read a uh, fair enough, a few verses up to 17, but from verse 1. And this is the Apostle Paul. He was a devout Jew, a teacher of the law, and he had converted to Christ. Uh, God met him uh, on the Damascus Road, and he converted to Christ. And, and then he became an apostle of Christ. And so this is him writing this letter to the Romans. And he says this, Paul of Onsers of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to, uh, to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. <clears throat> through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations, for his name. 
among whom you also are called of Christ of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God and called to be saints, and that just means some separated to God who were once pagans, now they're called to be belonging to God. That's what it means, set apart. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 8, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for your, all of your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my, in my spirit in the gospel of his Son that without ceasing I make mention of you in my prayers making requests if by any means now at last I might find a way by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of you and me. And now I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you, just as I had among other Gentiles. I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Thank you. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. Now here's the thing. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by going to church. <laughs> no, it doesn't say that, does it? The just shall live by faith. That started with Abraham. The faith of Abraham. And it came right up until Paul's time. And so what I was thinking about righteousness is because... Uh, I, I, in my, you know, when I'm thinking and I watch the news, any of you watch the news? You know, you watch yeah. the news, listen to the news, it's so like, uh, you realize that uh, so society or, uh, and the world is changing quite a bit. Um, I was thinking about the <coughs> war in Ukraine, um, and, uh, you know, last, I think it was a week ago or so, where they, the international court, has uh, put out a, an arrest warrant for you. God, if you're put, Putin, if he ever leaves Russia, he's going to be arrested. So he, he's stuck there. How's he going to get that? It'll never expire, that arrest warrant. So now, anyway, but he's, you know, anyway, he's that warrant around. I'm thinking about that. Um, and the number of people in his leadership, um, which will have to answer for the atrocities committed. It's not like they won't get away, they'll get away with it, it won't. It's like God is, is definitely in, in control um, of that whole situation and we'll find out, I guess, if we live long enough. The whole idea of firing rockets into apartment buildings full of people is something that we're not that used to. And so I'm thinking about that, I say, Where, what's righteousness? Because I guess the thing that made me, the other thing to think about, when. Putin had a, a big meeting in, a, in an auditorium of some kind. There must have been thousands of people there listening to him speech. And as always, the, the Archbishop of, of, of the Russian Orthodox Church is sitting right there in the middle. And Putin's speech was about why it was justified to invade Iran to restore the old Soviet Union and all that stuff. And I thought to myself, well, that, that's disturbing that the re a representative of Christ would, uh, would uh, condone this. Then uh, another thing I think about is, you know, the, 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 it's particularly true in the United States, which seems to be unraveling, is uh, what they describe as woke culture. It's like uh, the, 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 that uh, the old order of things has not been just for all people, and therefore that should all be overturned and all kinds of new things should be incorporated. We should now uh, teach children sexually explicit stuff because they need to know all this stuff and blah, blah, 
corrupt, corrupting a whole generation. The thing that came to my mind when I when I was when I was listening or watching these things happen, I thought to myself, hmm, it reminds me uh, of oh, something Jesus said. And it was like, uh, hmm, what was that verse he said? He said it would be. He said like. It would be better for a man to have a millstone tied around his neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea than to offend one of these little ones that he's yeah. talking about kids. Yeah. Is God concerned that kids are getting hammered with this stuff? Uh, the third thing I thought about was like in Israel. Israel's an interesting place. You see, they're, they since 1948, they... The, the, the powers that be, the United Nations, there, they said that okay, Israel could return to the state. Up to that, before they weren't allowed. So you think of it. Uh, when when Jesus was going to be crucified on the on the night before he was arrested, he walked into the temple and looked around. That's a, that's a thing. It was empty. You know, it was be the temple guards or something. He walked around, walked in and looked around. And he has that great prayer in Matthew, uh, I think 23 at the end, he says, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would often like to gather you as a can gather as chicks, but you were not willing. Mm -hmm. So henceforth from this day, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That hasn't happened yet. So Israel is trying to rebuild and uh, if you follow Israeli news, I follow, I got an Israeli news app, and I keep it, I think, uh, this week in Israel, that the Orthodox, the Orthodox uh, Jewish uh, rabbis and so on, the, the ultra-Orthodox, they, they don't want anybody talking about Jesus to Jews. So they wanted a law passed by Netanyahu and his parliament that no more proselytizing Jewish people because you know why? There's tons of Jews, young Jews coming to Christ. <laughs> it's like, yeah, everywhere. There's something like 150 messianic congregations in Israel. So they're seeing like, oh, Israel's evaporating in front of our faces, the Orthodox guys. And then now they say, like, no, we're not going to do that. I was going to ask if I could put a put tape on here about. Gigantic Messianic Jewish congregation, all believers in Christ, singing praises to God. And they're much more musical. Like, we have a great band here, but you watch those, they got every instrument under the sun. <laughs> for, they're, they're, you know, praising God, you know, for them, it's like, wow, the promise of thousands of years, we know what it is, we know what it is. <laughs> and the, the only reason they didn't show it is it goes on for an hour and a half. <laughs> But here's the thing. My question is, like, how long will God wait until he appears? Yeah. Now, the Jewish rabbis, they, they want to rebuild, as you're probably following this, they want to rebuild the temple that was destroyed in 70 AD. Uh, when Jesus came and he started his ministry for three and a half years, he was constantly speaking to the Jews first. If you read Matthew, he's always talking to the Jews, telling them what happened, and, uh, and, uh, and finally got to the point where they said, like, they said, he said, they said to him, this is his last question that before he just, he never talked to them again until in parables. He said, they said, he said uh, give us one sign. Now this is after years that Jesus has been with, a couple of years, done all kinds of things fed thousands, uh, raised people from the dead, done all kinds of things, but it wasn't for our showmanship, he just did it because who he was. And, uh, and so he, he said, show us one sign that you are the Messiah. Jesus says, sure, I'll give you one. Jonah. Huh? Jonah. Rabbi Smith, what do you think? Jonah. What happened to Jonah? It was a guy God told him, go tell the pagan Ninevites, who their main thing was, if they want, they captured, and they were Assyrians, eh? Their main thing about taking people captive, 
they had all the males were soldiers in Assyria. They, everybody else that did all the work were slaves that they captured. And if you were somebody bad at the time, they skin you alive and hang you up on the wall and they just let you die. That's how evil they were. So God says to no, no, Jacob, go to Nineveh and tell him to repent. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> he gets on a boat to go the other way. <laughs> He's not going there. And so God said, he brings a big storm. Jonah's thrown overboard. <laughs> But the other sailor says, no, it's my fault that this is happening. Throw the board. The sea is calm and Jonah's gone. So he was swallowed by a great fish. People say, oh, well, there must have been something there to keep the life of the How did he die? If you, read, if you read Jonah very carefully, I think he actually died because it's no problem for God to raise the dead, right? It's one of the things he did. So anyway, he says, I'll give you one sign. Jonah was in the grave three days and three nights. And then God brought him back to life. That's my that's a sign I'm telling you. And they said, What does that mean? I don't know. What's he talking about, Jonah? This is talking about himself. That's the sign. The resurrection is the sign. Because Christianity. It's not about being religious or joining a church or, or doing good, helping people, giving money to a Ukraine. It's not about it. It's, the thing is this. The only thing that Christianity is, is having a relationship with Jesus, who is alive. That's the thing. He's alive. If you don't, you read the, let's just look at one, uh, just back up just a bit. This is, uh, you were in Romans, you can just look at in uh, Acts, um, uh, sorry, John, um, just before Acts, it's a great story. Uh, Acts chapter, uh, sorry, John chapter, um, where are we? Okay, we'll start with this one. So, uh, <clears throat> chapter 21. Oh, uh, chapter 20, sorry. Hmm. I, I like this one. It's, uh, it's so amazing. Verse 19. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, this is after the day Jesus had died, was buried. The same day at evening, on the first day of the week, that's <clears throat> when the doors were shut and the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw him. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, for if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with him when Jesus came. And the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I have seen his hands and, uh, and the print of the nails and put my finger in his side, or a print of the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them, and Jesus came with the doors being shut. And again he stood in the midst. You can't shut Jesus up. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I don't know what the disciples are thinking <laughs> they locked the doors <laughs> Jesus came once so it's okay here he is coming again doors locked again I think they would have got the message oh Jesus is alive Let's let it. we're okay you know. and so he says to Thomas 
The doors being shut, stood in the midst. He said, Peace be to you. And he said to Thomas, Reach out your finger here and look at my hands, and reach out your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said, My Lord and my God. Now this is, this is before Jesus returned to the Father. So there was 40 days, if you read Acts, 40 days that after, the re after Jesus died, you know that, you read that. 40 days after Jesus met with the disciples and told them all, told, sort of explained everything that, that they didn't get before Christ came. And he said, now just wait here. 10 more days and then the, the Spirit of God is coming. And, he's good. and that means that I will be with all believers everywhere in every age for all things in all time with you. He's with Israel. He's going to bring Israel to recognize because you know what? Here, I got, I got. I wanted to show you something here. <laughs> oh, John, John, just, 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 just. You can read Malachi the last book. I don't just like I took, take this Bible here. This is a big, thick book. It cost me thirty-five bucks. I think to get it. <laughs> this much. Is about Jesus, or about God the Father trying to get the Jewish people to do the will of God. And right from the beginning, they struggled with that. And, G and God didn't ask them to do a lot of things. He gave them and he gave Moses the Ten Commandments. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then when, if it was too complicated for, for people, he said to the Jewish people, okay, Jesus, and Paul and Romans, he says, okay, or Jesus, and Paul said the same thing. He said, he said listen, there's only two. <laughs> love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Now go do it. <laughs> Why is that so hard? Doesn't, don't you love that God makes it simple? Love God. But how are you going to do that? Jesus. He is our righteousness. He makes it possible, by the Spirit of God, He makes it possible for us to be accepted, accepted by the Father, because He sees us in Christ. And so now we are His family, right? So, you know, the fourth thing that I was thinking about is not only Israel needs to come to know Christ, the risen Christ, they haven't yet, and, and actually all of human history is going towards that event. There's, you know, Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, and all that, they're all together against Russia. You know why? Because they have oil, big time. They found oil in Israel, big time, off the Gulf. Tons of it. They could. They. I watched the video. Says that it, Israel could supply all of Europe with oil if they needed it. There's political issues about that with Germany, but <laughs> and they found they got all these right. It's like a jewel in a desert. That's what Israel. Is. It's this jewel. The the, the, land, the They turned the desert into into uh, into gardens. Without the Messiah, they still don't see it. But the third, the, the last one is that I thought about is this. <clears throat> I, I find that people are uh, th that there's a decline in like personal righteousness globally. It's like it's that everyone is starting to do what is right in their own eyes. Look at the political situation in any country. It's so chaotic. It's so chaotic. I can't even imagine how the world's going to continue. Except, um, well, we're going to run out of time, and I just got started. <laughs> I want to just read one uh, from Thessalonians. Um, It 
this is where you see righteousness is not something that's holy, except if it, except as it means separated from God. It's not. It's not something you learn or you earn. It's 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 a gift from God. God is righteous, and He gives righteous to those who believe in Christ because when Christ died on the cross he died for our sins he, he wasn't cru he was crucified by the Romans with the help with the encouragement of the Jewish leadership he was crucified uh, and they thought you know don't let them bring this charge on us you know it was you know but the thing is this that was terrible the sufferings that Christ suffered. As the, as the man beside him on the left and on the right when on the cross, the two thieves, they suffered the same physical suffering. But that wasn't the suffering. That was suffering. Yes, it was terrible. It was terrible because of who he was. But the suffering is not that. It's that, that song. That's why we got that song. Effect. It was our sin that held him there. It was, that's what made the cry. It was like the, when the Jesus cried out to the Father, to heaven, Father, where are you? Why have you forsaken me? Why? And it all went dark. Everything went dark. Why? Because Jesus had become, can you imagine all the sin and of the world at that moment came on Jesus? And he suffered our death, separation from God forever. He suffered it. What did I do? Nothing. Nothing. Except believe in Christ. Wow. Well, that's not the end of the story. I'm just going to read this. Paul has been writing to these Thessalonians, and some of you know it uh, quite well. And uh, I'm just going to read it to close. Verse 4. Paul writing here to the Thessalonians, going through a hard time. I mean, all these people are up. These people, Thessalonians, a lot of you read the epistles, have come to Christ from idol worship, uh, that had been going on for years. The Ephesians, you read the Ephesians, the Ephesians had been worshipping Artemis, the, the, uh, the sexual god, for 900 years. Seven, seven and 900 years. And the gospel comes on, these people throw it off and believe in Jesus in an instant. Their life has changed. But that means that they're now not on the same page with all the other people who live in Thessalonica who are idol worshippers. they got nowhere to go. Their friends don't like them. They lose their jobs. And they, they, their, their kids are persecuted. They're like, just like, ah. Paul's writing them. says, yes, that, yes. There is, there is some kind of suffering about being a Christian. There is pushback. There is. And, and, and so, even there, they're discouraged. And he said, but it's not over till it's over. Here's that's what we're talking about, and then it will be over. Stop talking. Listen, this is what he said. Verse 13, chapter 4. I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, that's who have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him, even so God will. Jesus 
For this I say to you, that by the word of the Lord, we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord, ah, the coming of the Lord, that's an interesting thought, will by no means perceive those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. Well, we're not living in that culture, but it's coming. It is definitely coming. Every day. Every day. It's coming to unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is growing, growing, growing. And things are happening. Keep your eyes open. So two things to do. Keep your eyes on Israel. <laughs> What's going on there? They're trying to rebuild the temple on the same place where that big mosque is. <laughs> Only place in Islam. Don't think there'll be fireworks. Something's going to happen. And keep your eyes up, looking up. Keep close to God. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a righteousness that that began from the very first believer, from way back. Father, we thank you for the believers in Christ in the New Testament that are such an encouragement to us. First the twelve, and then others. And then, and then around the whole area, around Jerusalem and beyond. People turning from paganism, from religion, from rules, from all kinds of stuff, from to Christ. Finding peace. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we are here today. We were able to talk about your righteousness, but we realize, Lord, that unrighteousness gets dark pretty quick. Help us to be faithful. Help us to keep our eyes on you. And Father, we look forward to your appearing. But help us, Lord, to live our daily lives in every circumstances that, we, that we're in to honor you give you glory by our own personal righteousness that you have given us. It's not a, it's not a religion, Lord, it's you working in us through your Son, the risen Lord Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name.